In this video, I'm going to show you how to make mini monthly calendars and how to add them to your printables. So I have tried making mini monthly calendars in many different software, and by far the easiest is Affinity Publisher. You can quickly make the mini monthly calendars. You can quickly change the style. As you can see here, there's a few different variations. You can change the colors, font size, resize it easily. You can reposition it anywhere that you like on any printable. It's just a lot easier to use than all the other software programs that I've tried, like Photoshop, Microsoft Excel, Microsoft Word, Canva, PicMonkey, all of those. Definitely Affinity Publisher. All the way okay so I'm going to show you how you can use these in your printables and then also how to make one and then customize it to whatever style suits you so I have done a few examples here um, which we actually make in my e-course which I'll have linked down below if you did want to um, learn how to make some other things in affinity publisher some other printables so you can add color to your designs but I find that I've now switched towards just simple black and white because then I can add as much color as I want using pens and highlighters and dot marks and washi tape stickers and all that. So that's why all my designs um, are just simple black but you can obviously add any color that you want. So this one I did a horizontal layout and I just added a little monthly um, overview here, little dates at a glance have a monthly planning page where we've got the current month and then also next month's dates. You could include the previous months if you want to, but I find I don't really need to refer to that because that month's gone. So I tend to only put the current month and next month. You can do an uh, overview, like an annual dates page. You can add notes box down the bottom. You could do checklists. You could expand these so that they fill out the whole page with no extra space. But I always find it's, uh, you can never have too much note space in your planner. So I always add it if I can fit it in. You can do a quarterly planning page with the first quarter dates and then you can simply copy it for the second quarter. Once you make one of these mini um, dates at a glance templates, it's really easy to fill it out for the whole rest of the year. You can do a monthly planning page. This is also really good for project planning. So you're like, okay, I've got a big project. This is September. What dates am I doing? What? You can list out everything and then I highlight it and then I can highlight the dates that I'm working on those tasks. It's just another good way to keep everything organized, especially if you are not um, wanting to use a calendar like this, for example. So if you don't like cramming things into the boxes, you prefer a list format, then this, this style is really good for that. So here in a boxes layout, you've probably seen plenty of um, planners will always have like mini calendars here. We can easily um, add them in as well. All right, so let's get started making one. So I'm just going to zoom in. All right, so first things first, we need to use the table tool. So I'm going to left click and drag until I have seven columns because we have seven days of the week. I prefer a Monday start, but if you want to do a Sunday start, you can go ahead. Now, if you are doing a plain white background like we have here, I would recommend doing bold font style because this is pretty, it doesn't really stand out. It's pretty bland as well. Uh, it does also help that Arial is kind of a simple font you can change it, as you can see, use the diffuse over here. Uh, this one is Anton, which is my favorite. So I'm going to change it to Anton. And I'm going to left click and drag and do that with the whole um, table. And you can change it after you've finished designing as well. That's same thing, you would just left click and drag and then change the font style. But see how Anton's just really nice and bold, simple block font. And some fonts can be a bit weird. Um, and like I would never use a calligraphy style font it's just going to be too hard to read so if you're not sure go with Anton it's a free font as well okay so I've got my dates here if you wanted to add a colored background behind your letters you would click up here into the table tool and then left click and drag so you've got all seven of those boxes selected choose this button here as you can see there's no background because we've turned off the fill so we can pick maybe black Obviously, you're not going to see it because our font is black. So let's pick a different color. So maybe go with like this purpley color. Some people don't mind the black with like a lighter color like this. But for me, if I'm doing a colored background, I want all my font to be white. So we can left click and drag. And then you can change the color of your font up the top here. White is always up there for quick reference, which is very handy. If you do want to do a white background with different colors, just pick whatever you want from this swatches here. If you click this drop down, there's so many other options as well. There's also the um, gradient tool, the color tool. Like there's just so many options for colors that you can do. And you can also color match exactly. Um, I have other tutorials for that. So I won't get too much into doing colors. All right. So I'm just going to make this a more obvious color so we can see what we're doing. Let's go with where's a pretty aqua. 
it's this teal color. See how the white just pops against the color? Well, I think so anyway. Okay, so now we need to align our text. So if I zoom in, you can see that the letters are quite close to the top of our box here and there's more space down the bottom. So I like to align mine to the center. I think it looks a bit more like professional. So let's left click and drag. If you need to react, I'm just clicking off here with the mouse so we can see it clearer because when you double left click on your table, it brings up these like pop-up menus, which can get annoying when you're trying to see kind of like more clutter. Okay, so to align our text, we're going to left click and drag and we can change it up the top or down here after you've clicked the click off, just in case you don't already have this menu up. Remember, if you do this, it won't show. You just have to click on one cell and then this will appear just because you have to be specific with the order. It's like my only gripe with Affinity. You have to be specific about the order that you're selecting things when you use the table tool. All right, so left click and drag our text. And then here we can change our inset, let's say 0.03. And we can see that it's moved down a bit. See how we have more space up the top and it's an even amount down the bottom and it looks good. If yours did not do that, make sure that you have this button here selected. So link. If you see this, it's not linked. And if you change it in here, it's only going to change that left inset, not all of them. So if you want to align it to the center of your boxes, make sure this is selected before you change any numbers. Yeah, I like 0.03. Okay, so now we need to resize because this is obviously huge. We don't want our um, calendar to be that big like it's supposed to be mini. So let's make it mini. So we're going to left click and drag. So we've got all of our columns selected. And if you've ever used Excel, it's just like that, how you left click and drag to resize those columns. Let's just zoom in a bit. So I'm happy with that. If you want to do a specific size um, of your calendar, you can resize here, your cells, and you can also use the transform menu as well. But I'm happy with that size, so I'm going to carry on and add my dates. So let's say, okay, we're in January. January started on the 1st. So up here, I would do number one and then number two. And if you keep hitting tab, you can add in all of your dates really quickly. You will need to do this um, seven times because there are seven possible um, days that the first could be. So the first could be a Monday, a Tuesday, Wednesday, you get the idea. Once you do that though, and you've, you've set them up, you can then just copy and paste them and then change the month because if you think about it, at some point um, during the year, you're going to get a duplicate. So there's going to be one month where Saturday is the first and that's going to happen again in a later month of the year. So you can just copy and paste um, that Saturday template. So I've got two different font styles here. Maybe you like that, but for me, I want it all the same. So I'm going to change these ones to Anton. So let's left click and drag and let's go Anton. That is super bold. Um, for some font styles like this one, it's already on bold, so it doesn't really make any um, difference when you click on this. If you do use custom fonts, keep that in mind. And I'm going to just reduce mine down to, say, font size 10. And you can see that it's also doing that thing where it bunches the text to the top. So I'm just going to change that as well. All right. Now, I don't need these extra rows down here, so we can just left-click and drag, right-click, and then delete row. All right, it's coming together, looking pretty good. Just a few other things that you might want to tweak is the borders. So this is quite a um, thin border. Maybe you want something a bit more bold. So if you left click and drag over everything, you can then choose what do you want to change. So this button here will only do the outer borders. So these ones, if you want to only do the inner borders, it's this one. And see how they've gone bold to show you a bit clearer which ones you're changing. And if you want everything, you click that. So for me, I'm going to change my outer border and I'm going to increase it from 0 0.5 to say one. And then I just click this button here so it like gets off the table so it doesn't have that clutter menu up the top inside and I can actually see what it looks like a bit better. So that's not too bad. Maybe you really want your top row to stand out and you only want this here to be increased. So if you left click and drag, let's choose bottom and see how that went to 0 0.5. So we want to change that to one. So now we have a more bold heading up the top. Let's say that you don't um, want to have any borders in between here. So left click and drag, 
click this button here and let's just go none. And now you can see we've just got that colored bar up the top. And if you want to get those lines back, you can just press Control Z to undo. Or you can double left click and we had turned them off. You would just click this button here to turn them back on and change it to whatever thickness that you want, however you want to um, design it. The other thing that you could do is shade some of the wicks. So maybe you want every second uh, row to be shaded just so it I guess, stands out a bit more. So we could do a lighter shade of blue, do the next one in a blue. That could work and add some color that way. Or you could do a different color for each row and make it rainbow. That could be a bit um, heavy on your printer ink though. Just keep that in mind. If you're doing it for a digital planner, it won't matter. I um, was obviously not printing it. So um, the other thing, if you didn't want any borders at all, so if you wanted to remove them like this style here, you can do that by left clicking and dragging, selecting all, and then just going none. And you can see that it has removed it. Okay, so whenever you're happy with fiddling around with borders and, and thicknesses and colors and all that stuff, um, you can change the color of the border as well here. Just quickly show you that. So if you want it to be the matching blue, and then, oh, sorry, all borders, matching blue. Your recents will show here as well, which is great. And then we'll go, yeah, one point for everything. I don't tend to do more than one point because I think it's just too bold, particularly because if you think about this calendar, it's probably only going to be on your page like, what, like no more than two inches, surely. So you don't really want a really fat border. Let's keep that in mind. And I would always do some test prints as well. Okay, so um, for me, that blue is just a bit too much. So I'm just going to undo that. Okay, so the only thing that we are missing that you've probably already realized is the month. Like what month is this? So I like to add mine above like this, just simply put it there, either have the border or none, up to you, what style you want to do, I'll show you both. So double left click on your table again, right click and go insert row. So now I'm just going to copy these down and I'm going to merge these together by left clicking and dragging then clicking this button and I'm going to change this to January double left click, get rid of that, and go January. Uh, one con with Affinity, well, another one with this table tool, it can change the font. So if you want to avoid that, I wait until the last letter, and then I type what I want, hit the home button on my keyboard, and then press delete. And then I don't have to worry about highlighting it all, changing the font, etc. Um, it's just a quick, quick fix. Okay, so you could leave a colored background, or you could turn that off. Maybe you want your text to be that blue so it all coordinates. If you don't want a border around here, just turn it off. Let's go the top border, none. And then we can do the sides, none. And the left side, none. And then we can have our finished calendar. Maybe you want to increase this font size though, just looking at it, make it stand out a bit more. So let's say this was the finished product. You're happy with this. Now you want to use it in your actual printable. Okay, so there's a few things you're probably going to want to do. We've gone over how to change the colors, how to change the font si uh, style and the font size. So now let's go over resizing the whole thing quickly. So first of all, you're going to want to copy and then let's say I'll put it here. So I'll just delete that one and put it here to show you. So control V to paste it. And if you have multiple documents open in Affinity, that's no issue at all. You can just open the next one. They'll be up here like little tabs and you can just copy and paste in between documents. I just like to keep everything in the one um, as like my master design. And then I can just copy and paste things out as I need them for like my actual planner. So you can see I've got all my templates and then I'd have another file with the actual thing that I'm going to like print out. Um, so it's just easier, I think, to organize it all and I've got everything in one place. Okay, so you can see that it's pasted in here. We can left click and drag to reposition it or you can use the arrow keys, whatever you want to do. Now I have this awkward gap here. I've got a lot of space at the top and on the side. So if we click on our table, press the shift key and then choose a corner, we can resize it quite easily to fit. 
can move it around. I'm happy with that. Just make sure with your guides that it doesn't go over. So it is here. Usually it will like snap. You'll feel it pull. I don't want it on the center line that they do though. I want it on the edge. I should put that over a bit more. Yep, like that. So we can resize it up. And that to me is a lot quicker than, okay, I've got to highlight everything. And then I'm going to guess maybe like font size 20 might work in this space. Oh, no, that's too big. Change it. Like it just takes too long. Just click on your table, press the shift key on your keyboard, left click and drag your mouse out to increase the size and then drag it in to reduce the size. And you'll see that it automatically proportionally reduces everything, which is great. So easy. If you did have extra gap like this one here, um, you could keep going, but like it's just for looking at dates. So I don't really care um, if it's huge or not, as long as it's big enough that I can read it, like I'm happy with that. And I would actually prefer more space for review. So I'm going to increase that out. So that works there. And you can do the same thing where you can paste them in on whatever other printable you want to use them on. Okay, so the other thing that we need to do is set up our template. So let's say we're happy with this one, we're good with all the colors, the font style and everything, we're all good. So now we need to make copies. So control C on your keyboard, control V to paste it. If you want them to be kept perfectly in line, press the shift key and drag them over. So if we were starting to make this template, for example, this is what we would be doing. So the next month is February. Oops, caps lock. February. And then that starts with the first on, might actually be the same though, because it's a short month. And oh, no, it starts on a Tuesday. Okay, so you go one, and you can see that it's still um, switching back to the original font. So we can just change that afterwards, or you can left click and drag, paste it over everything. So all the numbers are correctly there. You go one, and then you see when you hit tab, it'll highlight that number already. So we're just going to delete it as you go. So it's a lot quicker. And you would just do this seven times. And then once you've done that, you can reuse these calendars for whatever month, wherever you want it, in whatever printable. And as you can see, it's really not taking that long to add them in. It took me like, what, under a minute. And now February's done. And if you wanted to for a short month like this where it only needs five weeks, not the six, you can delete out this last row. Or if you watch any of my planner review videos, you probably have seen that I really cannot stand the sixth row. So I would actually put 31st up the top here. Let's go 31st. Oops, it did the whole row. One, two. Let's just delete those out. And I would actually have deleted this row. And then that gives me some more room. Because I'm not going to write in these boxes. So it doesn't really like matter about having it down the bottom or having extra boxes because you can't write in them or use them anyway. Like if you look at this, these boxes are tiny. They're only 0 0.28 inches. So, you know, you're not going to fit anything in there anyway. So for me, I would just do it like this, but you can do the six row if you want. You got both options there and you would copy it again and do Wednesday is the first of the month and so on. You get the idea. You'd have this page where you can always just come back to it. Okay, um, right click copy and then take it to whatever page and paste it or control C and then control V are the keyboard shortcuts. You can do that quite easily. So you know, on any of these pages that I've shown you, the other thing you could do it for is a computer screensaver. So if you're going to do that this style where there's like no um, borders and then maybe making everything white on just a black background and then when you log onto your computer that's what you see that's really handy as well um, and you can add like the month in bigger font or in cursive and make it decorative out a pattern background like whatever you want to do um, that can also be a really good use for them as well because that's you know convenient when you click on your desktop rather than like click over here and then, okay, what's the next month? What's the next month? If you just have them all there quickly as a screenshot, that can be a lot um, easier and, and helpful as well. So I hope you found this tutorial um, helpful and that you learned something new. If there are any Affinity um, publisher tutorials you would like to see, please put a comment down below. I have a link to my e-course where I teach you how to make other printables. And if you have any questions, just leave them down in the comments box below as well.